Hello. Hi. <coughs> so hello again. So a few uh, words uh, about my company and me. Uh, I'm a co-founder of GeoSolutions. Uh, it was born in late 2006. Uh, at the beginning, it was mainly uh, involved on uh, geospatial services and data fusion services. Uh, then we suddenly moved uh, into open source projects. The first one was GeoServer, where I, I, I am actually an active developer. I also a member of the PSC of GeoServer. And uh, I started in 2006, basically. Uh, I, I personally created the WCS service the first time. And I'm actually involved mostly on the security stuff of your server and uh, the WPS process. Uh, now I mostly work on GeoNode, open source project. I am part of the PSC. I am the chair of the PSC and also a project officer on OSGEO uh, for the GeoNode project. So one GeoNode. A uh, few words. Probably most of you knows already what GeoNode is. I'm just real quick uh, try to explain what what it is for and what the what can be used for. So GeoNode is uh, a framework, a web framework basically a, a based on Django as we have seen before, and uh, the uh, it can be used for sharing. So you can use GeoNode to share your data with other people. It can use for collect data, as we have seen just before with the previous use case, but we have a lot of use case. And also, you can use it for use your data. Since it is based on Django, which is a Python framework, uh, it is really uh, extensible. You can easily access the model. You can easily access the data sets through the REST API and the Python libraries he has, and uh, produce, create more additional products or uh, processing out of your collected data. And we will see a few examples later on on this presentation also. It is open source, of course. So GeoNode, it's a platform from the management and publication of geospatial data. It brings together mature open source software Currently, it integrates very mature open source software like GeoServer, MapStore, PySCSW, GeoNetwork, and so on. Uh, it aims to have a, an easy to use user interface. And uh, one of the goals, the principal goals of GeoNode, is to allow non GIS expert, non developers, to publish. Uh, their data set, geospatial data sets, and share their data sets and maps with other. It is made for users, of course. It is made for administrators, as we have seen before. You can manage uh, really granularly the uh, authorization and authentication uh, on all over your resources. It is made for developers, which can easily create new plugins, new extension on your node, and create uh, uh, more application on top of the web portal. Uh, it allows you to uh, create metadata sets on top of your resources, uh, mesh up together, mix together everything, and create a nice data visualization and maps. It does, among the let's say, principal features of your node. There is a, a, a web interface that allows you to upload directly your geospatial data sets. Of course, uh, behind the certain limits, uh, you, you cannot upload gigabyte of rasters through the web interface. Uh, it has integrating styling, so you can uh, style your data sets directly through the web interface, through the web portal. You can allow users of Genode to create styles directly through the portal without struggling with uh, uh, complex UI interfaces or shell script or something. Uh, you can even uh, allow users to edit the data directly on Genode. 
they can create features, they can edit features, geometries, they can edit the attributes, values, they can filter data sets and so on. Uh, as I said before, there is a very granular permission system that allows you to decide who has access to what. Uh, it allows you um, to uh, download your, your data sets in different uh, output formats uh, automatically. Uh, it allows you to manage and divide your users into departments, groups, and security groups. Uh, so as an administrator, it has very nice and useful features. It allows you to add additional metadata on top of your resources in order to expose your layers um, through the catalog service. Uh, the overall architecture, as I said before, is uh, basically a Django application uh, composed by other sub-applications. Um, the Web clients are based on uh, uh, JavaScript. Uh, they use, again, uh, open source projects uh, for the GIS navigation, like Open Layers, Leaflet, um, and even Cesium, uh, if you want. Uh, you can choose to use uh, technologies, uh, well known technologies for the front end, like GeoX, the old one, or React for the new one. Under the hood, you can use GeoServer or QJS server and uh, databases uh, like uh, uh, PostgreSQL with uh, GIS extensions. Many GeoNodes. Uh, okay, GeoNode itself uh, cannot address all use cases, of course. So, uh, what if I want to customize my portal somehow? Uh, avoid to reinvent, to reinvent the wheel. Avoid to fork and diverge for the original source code because uh, you will lose uh, the uh, updates and you every time you will have to struggle by merging your source code with the new code. So what is a good solution? A uh, solution is to start with a Geonode project which, which is a Django template ready to use that allows you to create a materialized Django project which uses GeoNode as a dependency. That means that you won't touch directly the GeoNode core. GeoNode will be downloaded and installed as a dependency of the project. So the next version, you have to just update your requirements. You just have to update your dependency and you will benefit of all the new feature coming with the new uh, version. Most probably you will have to touch prob just few settings. Um, it extends a vanilla node and it provides a custom Django application. Um, as usual, if you do something that it's, uh, can be of general interest for a community, for the community, please consider to provide back your source code and also documentation to, to the project. Uh, okay, what GeoNode project can do for you? It allows you to easily customize the, the GeoNode look and feel. You can override every single template available in GeoNode. So you can completely rewrite the portal if you want without touching the original core. You can easily extend your, the model if you need more metadata, if you need more resources, if you need to create specific things, other kind of uh, resources that, need, that addresses specific needs, you can easily extend the model without modifying the original one. Uh, define a brand new in user interface, as I said. Uh, you won't sacrifice versatility, uh, you won't sacrifice specific needs. Let's see a uh, few examples of, of what we practic practically, practically, I don't know how to, <laughs> have done by customizing Genode. Uh, this, is, uh, this was a, a project uh, that we have done uh, for the Caribbean Community Climate and Change Center, CIRED. Basically, they had this problem. 
uh, they have uh, a lot of single uh, departments uh, physically distributed, distributed uh, along, uh, along the highland and most of the time without uh, a reliable internet connection. Moreover, they had to collect data sets every day, especially meteorological data sets, uh, post-process the, the inputs, uh, update the data sets into your node, and then, whenever was possible, uh, to update a central catalog to allow other departments to benefit of the products created by by the other nodes, basically. So uh, at that time, we uh, extended uh, the main interface by using on top of it uh, a SICAN implementation. And basically, we used Geonode as a pure middleware. So basically, we completely remove the user interfaces of Geonode, and we just use the APIs of Geonode. So each department, uh, created uh, some scripts that automatically, in batch mode, uh, were able to ingest data on their own local instances. And then, every day, there were cron scripts able to automatically up update a central instance of your node and a central instance of Seekan. Uh, this is more or less a dia an architecture dry diagram of the components. And uh, this is how basically they uh, could be able to update mosaics. So basically they had forecasts updated every day uh, uh, on the meteorological data sets. Uh, Project two, uh, risk analysis tools. This was sponsored by the World Bank uh, on Afghanistan, and basically they wanted to they wanted to customize your node in order to expose on uh, uh, an human usable and readable interface um, some forecasts about the disasters uh, impacts and uh, um, also an analysis tools allowing manager to uh, estimate the costs, uh, both in terms of economics and victims in, in involved um, in case of uh, another those events. So basically, they provided us something like this, which was a, a huge uh, Excel table with a lot of numbers uh, as a result of models run by uh, a German company, and we customized your node uh, by plugging in something like this. So basically, we were able to, uh, we modified the admin dashboard, allowing a manager to upload the Excel file, and the Excel file contained also a metadata uh, XML file along with it. So we were able basically to, cr to fetch the category, uh, the title, the abstracts, the temporal dimensions of the forecasts, and the uh, number associated with the administration levels. So we were able to create this sort of navigation interface, which, is, which was much more usable and understandable for everyone. And again, also we were able to, to create charts out of the uh, original data sets. Uh, about the cost benefit uh, and decision tool, again, we had this monster here, basically, uh, with numbers and impacts accordingly to the solutions that the data manager and impact assessor could uh, uh, do in order to reduce the costs. And we came out with something like that, basically. Again, uh, a use, um, use case, different use cases related to the a specific hazardous events, basically, uh, along with the forecast, the data, and the map uh, with the associated layers. And notice that that was an application plugged in directly into your node. So we were using the Geonode model 
and did you know the resources to populate those data sets? And again, this is another use case. Uh, UNESCO project, uh, they wanted to, and actually they financed the advanced workflow in order to avoid uh, people behind able to directly publish uh, non-validated data sets. So their need was, was basically to allow the uh, state members to uh, managing the data sets before they became uh, publicly av available to everyone. So basically, we created an av advanced workflow uh, allowing us to, yeah, this is also the temporal series. Uh, yeah, I don't remember what is the slide, but anyway that allowed us basically to uh, make the manager of a single group approve a data sets before becoming public. Also, uh, among this work, we had the first implementation of the temporal vectorial uh, series. Uh, and uh, we had improved the internal messaging system of Genote and the notification system. Uh, Decatastrophize, this, this was again a, a complete new customization of Genode. Again, we here used only the middleware. We created a single application, single page interface uh, using React. And uh, we, bas we used the Genode model and user and security model to create all the process to assess uh, a, a disaster. But starting from the early warning, there was a system uh, collecting warnings from emails, uh, RSS, uh, whatever, and uh, creating alerts. The then, uh, eventually, the impact assessor could promote the alert to a real warning. So early warning. Next. Uh, we were able to move to another set of users with different rights, so they were able to access a completely different uh, aspect of the application, and they were able to create an operative picture and create annotations over the picture in order to instruct the resources on the field how to uh, intervene and how to prevent uh, more victims and costs. Uh, I will skip because I guess I have just one minute. Uh, okay, so uh, the future, which is almost reality now, uh, we created also Docker instances to, in order to allow and easily and easy the process of deploying new customization of your nodes. So now, uh, when, when, once you have your custom instance of your node or custom instances of your node project, you can easily create Docker images and distribute them so that uh, the, the, your customer basically could easily install and set up a, a production server in minutes. What's next? Uh, in the future, journal versions, we plan to uh, again remove as much as possible and detach the user interface from the middleware. So we would like to have an architecture where you can easily identify the middleware and the front end. And you, and you can plug in basically everything, front end, security subsystem, uh, geospatial server, uh, by using an, an abstraction level. So eventually, in the future, you could be able to use just the API in order to, <laughs> in order to create your customization of the portal and the application. That's it, almost in time. 
Thank you a lot, uh, Alessio. And now uh, five minutes for questions. Hi, so thanks a lot already for, for your work there. Uh, the modularization looks super interesting for people like us who are like software developer. What is still unclear for me is like the benefit of we get by using Geonode versus, for example, building a Django app on top of PostGIS and Leaflet, which is something we've been doing a lot. So what will be the key benefit for you of getting the integrated uh, uh, Geonode experience versus taking the piece that we know? Thank you. Well, first of all, you don't have to build everything from scratch. <laughs> And then you already have a model and you already have a community behind it. So basically, whenever you have issues, whenever you encounter problems, uh, you know that the same developers of the geospatial servers are actually involved in the development of your node. So they know how to uh, better uh, improve the core to communicate uh, with the geospatial server. That said, of course, if you don't need all those functionalities, uh, you can build something by your own, of course. Uh, but uh, uh, consider that in the end, uh, the Geonode geo dependency and the Geonode model is not that big. So it's easily manageable and already provides you basically a relational model that you can use for your uh, your software, so you. Sorry. The the starting point would be to to understand how the Geonode project Django template uh, actually works, and uh, follow the Geonode developers workshop, which is online, that teaches you. Uh, the best ways to use the node project to extend the model and the templates.